Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you. Good morning, everyone. Come on in the room. Come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come on in the room. Today is Friday. It is June 18th. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come on in the room. The Lord is great. The Lord continues to be great. The Lord is mighty and powerful. Yes, he is. Good morning to you, Brother Larry. So good to see you this morning. Thank you for coming in the room and letting me know that you are here, and that you plan to be a participator in the Word, not just a spectator. Good morning to you, Sister Nicole. Sister Barbara, good morning. Come on, all of you. Come on in the room. Come on, come on, come on. Good morning to you, Sister Missy. Yes, 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 yes. I want to thank all of you that are joining and all of you that are sharing this word. Good morning to you, Sister Linda. Sister Barbara, good morning. All of you that are letting others know to join in. Good morning to you, Sister Sherilyn. All of you that are, yes, that are sharing. Good morning to you, Sister Sally. Letting others know to join in and, and tune in to Pastor Tina in the morning. Yes, good morning to you, Sister Donna. I just want to thank you for that. I just got, uh, I'm just got off a of proud of all of us. Good morning to you, Sister Nora. Uh, Sister Phyllis, good morning to you for letting people know that we are here. I want you to know that, listen, many, many of you know, good morning to you, Sister Tish, that I have a YouTube channel as well. Good morning to you, Sister Mary. For those that are not on Facebook, I also upload these meditations on YouTube. And uh, the other day we hit 100 people, 100 uh, subscribers on YouTube. Good morning to you, Sister Nimby. So if you know anybody that's not on YouTube and they want to hear the meditations, just have them subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's just called Tina Patton Ministries. It's on YouTube. They can just go out there and just get the meditations anytime they like. So for those who are, are Facebook averse, you don't want to get on Facebook because of all the drama or whatever, just have them go to my YouTube channel. And there's nothing out there but some meditations and um, just these meditations. They don't have to get anything else, nothing else. Good morning to you, Sister, uh, Sister Rebecca. Um, they can just go to my YouTube channel. They can get these meditations. Uh, good morning to you, Elder Gail. Listen, we're going to go before the Lord and we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this word. We know, Lord God, the Lord will be powerful, not because of the woman of God, but because of the man who sits behind the word, the man who has who have divinely inspired this word. We thank you, Lord God, for what it shall do for our minds and the hearts of the people. Yes, that they may hear it. They may eat it. They will receive it, Lord God, and they may be impacted by it in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, this morning I was struggling with the with the topic, um, what I was going to share on this morning. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I, would, I was struggling with the topic this morning because of what I wanted to talk about. Yes, yes, yes. So, what I want to talk about really has to do with how it is that we go. Oh, good morning to you. Yes, yes, yes. How it is that we help and bless other people who are in our care. Uh, I was going to title it the bad babysitter, but I figured if I did that, that my grandbaby's mother would not let me watch the baby anymore. So listen, good morning to you, Sister Nicole. Then I, you know, I was going to title it, you know, just enough rope to hang yourself. But then I was sure, wasn't sure how that was going to come off, come across. Good morning to you, Sister Sherry. So then I just thought I'd just title it, I, You Are Your Brother's Keeper. Because it is important, my God, how it is that we watch and how we care for those who are actually in our care and who are around us. That we understand it's important how it is that we hold on and honor one another. Come on to hear somebody. Uh, let me just tell you this real story really, really quickly. Uh, my God, my, my granddaughter who lives in the house with me lately, she's been spending some time with me and usually at night. So she gets to spend time with me and we hang out in the nighttime. And I think, I think her mother just wants me to get her sleepy so she can have some sleep at night. So, so we hang out at night. So my granddaughter has learned how to brush her teeth. And so she has a little toothbrush and some toothpaste and she brushes her teeth. And so she wanted to come and spend some time with her lovey. And so lovey got her a new toothbrush and we were brushing teeth and she wanted to use my toothpaste. And that was fine. And so we got in the bed and we were playing games and listening to music and dancing. And, and so, you know, it's getting late, you know, it's about midnight now because she stays up late. You got to you got to be able to hang with a two year old. Right. You know, she at that point. I'm going to talk my teach about terrible twos, but but she's at that point. You got to hang with her. And so she was running out of the room and I'm laying in the bed and she runs out the room and she comes back in the room and she says hi. And I say hi. And she runs out of the room and and she comes back. And, you know, just a minute later, I say hi. And she says hi. And listen, she goes out the room and maybe a two or three minutes later, Sister Roz, and, and she comes back and I say hi and she say hi. And she runs out the room again, Sister Roz. And then all of a sudden, 
I hear water running. And I wonder, why is water running in my bathroom? And I don't see the baby. So I jump up, everybody. And my dog, my grandbaby, is in the bathtub. I don't know how she got in there because I got a really tall bathtub. She, she's in the bathtub and she's in the, the water is running. And she's in there with the water on. And I praise God. So I jump, grab her out of the bathtub. You know, the water is running, and somehow she turned the thing on so the water was actually in the bathtub. And I grab her out, and I get her out, and I say, oh, my God, your mama's going to kill me. And so I get the, you know, we make a game out of it. And I say, no, bad, 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 that's bad. So I get the, you know what I did? I got the uh, the hair dryer. I dried her off. I made it again. I dried her off because I didn't want her mama to know that I took my eyes off of her for a few minutes and let her get in the bathtub and let her turn the water on. And my, my brother's keeper, ooh, that was not good. That wasn't good, people of God. And so the Lord was saying to me, ooh, you should not have taken your eyes off of that baby for a lot. Not one second, not one minute should you have let her not come back in that room and say, hi. But that's what we do, people of God. And he began to show me. So, so let me end the story. So she was all dried off nice and dry. <laughs> she went back to her mama. Yeah, I'm going to share the story because somebody, listen, that's listening, that's listening to this meditation is going to tell her mama because <laughs> I didn't share it last night. But I'm going to share it. But the point of the story is that when we have someone in our care, when we are watching over someone, Yes, of course, babies, I shouldn't have taken my eyes off of her. But when we are watching someone, when the Lord is giving us someone to care for, when the Lord is giving us someone that they are watching our spiritual walk and we are walking with them, they, we can't take our eyes off of them. Because as I was going to do this, the, me the meditation about you will give them enough rope to hang themselves, you will give them enough ammunition, you'll give them enough that they may destroy themselves. That it may be their downfall. And you want to be very careful that even the babes in Christ, yes, yeah, she was a real baby, but even the babes in Christ, Elder Gail, are very fast to get in trouble. Why is that? Because you allow them to do certain things and they see certain things. And even though you know that you can get in the bathtub and you know which spigot to turn on that is hot and which one is cold. Even though they may see you getting in the bathtub, even though they see you turning on one of the spigots, they as a babe don't know which one is hot and which one is cold. I thank God that she turned on the right one because they would not know that. And so that is the thing we have to understand, even about those two people of God, babes in Christ that are following us. They may see us do a thing, but because we haven't given them the full instruction Come on here, somebody. We may, we may lead them into a place where they don't want to go. We may lead them into a downfall because we're not holding their hand. We're not watching them. And then we think because they're adults, they ought to know. No, we've not given them the thing that they need. We haven't given them the tools. We haven't given them the resources that they need. Are you your brother's keeper? Somebody better say yes, because sometimes you say they should have known better. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 4, 9, it says, When the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother, Abel? Abel, I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? Oh, I want to say this morning to all of us, we are our brother's keeper. I know, listen, I know you didn't instruct them to do that thing. But because they saw you, because, my God, they saw how you were moving around. They saw, my God, how you did the thing that you did. They just wanted to do the same thing that you were doing. But what they didn't understand is that you had some of the word of God in you. You had, my God, some mighty teachers, some mighty mentors in your space that helped you. Haven't you done some really stupid things in your life? Oh, the baby didn't know that what she was doing was wrong until after I got to her. And I did a real bad face to let her know. Ooh, ooh, India, that was not, ooh, don't do that anymore. No, no, no. But how do I know that she won't do that again? How did I know she really understood what I was doing with my face? So that means I got to be careful now. Every time she walks into my bathroom, 
that she won't try to do the same thing over again. Listen, we are our brother's keeper. Because the thing about it is, we got to see what's happening in the world today. Why are so many people leaving the, 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 uh, the fold? Why are so many people going away from Jesus Christ? Why are so many people thinking that the Lord is not blessing them and healing them? Why is that? In, 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 in uh, Cain's anger, he killed his brother. He ki the thing about it is, there were two brothers. You know the story. They were born to Adam and Eve. Cain was a farmer, able, raised livestock. They both brought offerings to God. Cain chose vegetables from his harvest to bring as an offering, and Abel brought the very best of his livestock as an offering. God accepted Abel's offering, and God rejected Cain's offering. The thing, the thing about it is, it, we don't know why Cain killed his brother. Maybe it was something else. But the thing about it is that sin, when sin enters the heart of man, you, you just might do anything. Anything might happen when sin enters the heart of man. Because the thing about it went when after Cain killed his brother, God stepped in and God began to have a conversation with Cain. And he said, where is your brother? Where is Abel? Where is Abel? Cain said, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What's, what's going on here? He said, he said, I don't know. Basically, listen, the message, the message Bible says, he said, how should I know? Am I his babysitter? Are you a bad babysitter this morning? Are we the people of God, bad babysitters? Are we allowing those who are in our care to be destroyed? Are we killing them with our mouths? Are we killing them by backbiting? Are we killing them by being jealous, Sister Rose? Are we killing them by being angry at them, by being envious? Are we killing them by not supporting their dreams? Are we bad babysitters like I was last night? <laughs> Are we bad babysitters? I want to say this morning, listen, we are our brother's keeper. Every last one of us. I want to look at Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Because I want to show you why we are our brother's keeper. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. And as I'm reading this, I want us to understand that we were not put on this earth just to be here looking all pretty and looking, being all holy. We weren't just put here. Because we're all wonderful. We weren't just put here so that we can ride around in our fine cars and live in our fine houses. We were not just put here. It isn't just to have our children and go about our lives. We weren't just put here just to be who we are. You were put here for a reason. There is a purpose here for your life. And I want us to know, my God, this morning that the reason that we are here is to show the glory of God so that somebody else might see how mighty and powerful God is in their life. And when they see the power and the glory of God, glory to God, yeah, they might ask, how is it that I can be saved? You got to know this morning that there may be some things, my God, that you are doing or not doing that are destroying other people that are in your life, people that you are supposed to be caring for. Yeah, we don't call them babies, but they are babies, babies in Christ. They're baby saints. All of us at one point in time have been bad babysitters. Maybe I will retire the bad babysitters. All of us, Brother Larry, at one point in time have been bad babysitters because we've not been the example that God has called for us to be. Come on, let me read. The, ba the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20, Listen, I, I, I'm going to get there, but the Holy Spirit keeps unctioning me to say stuff. <laughs> this is the thing about it is sometimes we see our brother or our sister doing a thing. And instead of us in love, giving them some corrections so that my God, they can then be better. Oh, my God. We allow them to go about and do it, do it however they want to do it, knowing that that thing is going to lead them to destruction. I'm going to read it, Sister Nimby, and just a, let me read it. Verse number 15 says this. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. It says just between the two of you. 
If they listen to you, they have, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. The Bible says, truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound on heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I truly tell you that if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Now look at what this passage of scripture is saying. It is saying, my God, that because I am my brother's keeper, when I can help somebody else along the way, when I can show someone, my God, the thought, the sin that they are in, when I can help somebody to come from a place where the enemy is, oh my God, where the enemy is, I'm talking about whooping all up beside their head. When the enemy is killing and destroying and stealing from them. When I can bring somebody from a place of darkness and help them come. My God, see where they need to come to a place of light. The Bible is saying that I too can come together with that person and I can ask anything in the name of Jesus. Come on in here, somebody. He said, and the father will do it in my name. Don't you see that when we act as if we're not our brothers and our sister's keeper, the things that God has for us, come on, we've, leave, we've left them on the table. The promises that God has for us, he said they are yea and amen. But because, oh my God, but because you feel like that you're not your brother or your sister's keeper, those things that even you have asked for, those things have not been done for you because my God, you feel like my God came. You feel jealous. You feel angry. You feel envious because perhaps. Perhaps maybe God is doing something different. I didn't say something better, but maybe something different in somebody else's life. Are you a bad babysitter this morning? Or are you willing, my God, to see the sins of somebody else? And there was some instruction, my God, in this passage of Matthew chapter 18. Oh yeah, it looked like a whole big plan of how you could bring somebody back to the Lord. But if it's important enough for you to make sure your friend does not die and go to hell, to make sure your mother, your your father, your cousin, your brother, your sister, come on, your neighbor, your co-worker does not die and go to hell. If it's that important to you, you will look at what the word of God says and you will just, you will decide within yourself. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. I will be, come on, I will not be a bad babysitter, but I will, my God, be one. Yes. Who will, let's see you, sister Marilyn, who will gain my brother, my God, because I'm doing it. God's way. Oh yeah, there is a way. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto man. He said, but that way ends in destruction. But if you would do it the way that the Lord is saying it, there are many people that have been lost, my God, because we as men and women of God, now I'm talking to the mature saints. I don't know about the ones that are sitting in the back seat in the pew by the door. I'm talking about the mature saints, those that will come to church, those that will sit in the front, those will be the fire, the fire starters. I'm talking about those, my God, those that will share the word of God with somebody else. I'm talking about those who will say my God to somebody, come on without, come on without doubt, without fear that I'm sorry, sister. I'm sorry, brother. But this thing that you're doing right now, this thing, my God is not the way of God. I'm sorry, brother. I don't mean to get in your business, but I understand my God, you're trying to be a child of God. And if you're trying to be a child of God, this thing, my God, this way that you're acting, that's not God's way. My God, if you want to exhibit, my God, the characteristics of God. You have got to, my God, show the fruit of the Spirit. I know you said you love somebody, but God's got a way, my God, of loving and that's not the way, my God. I know, my God, you want to come on and hear somebody. You want somebody to think, my God, that you're a disciple of Christ. But if you really want to be a disciple of Christ, you've got to do it God's way. You've got to do it with humility. You've got to do it with love, my God. You've got to do it with goodness. You've got to do it with gentleness, glory 
to God. If you want to, I come on in here, somebody. If you want people to believe that you are the disciple of Christ that you say that you are, there are certain things that you got to do. Come on in here, somebody. And I can say that to somebody out of love. Come on, I don't got to get angry. I don't got to be mean. I don't got to cuss them out. Come on in here, somebody. But I'm telling you here what the word of the Lord said. I am my brother's keeper. If I see my brother, if I see my sister in a fault, I can go to them. I come on in here. I can call them on the phone. I can get them on Zoom. I can take them out to lunch. I can take them out to dinner. I can go, my God, to Starbucks and get them a coffee. And I can say, sister, let me talk to you for one moment. I love you. And I don't want to see you lost. But my God, I'm not, listen, I'm not angry. I'm not jealous. I'm not envious. But come on, but there is something, my God, that I need, my God, for you to do. My God, I need, my God, for you to turn this thing around. Not for my sake, but for your sake. And as a matter of fact, whatever it is that is ailing you, whatever it is that is bothering you, I know a Savior who is able, my God, to pick us up, who is able to lift you out of that pit of despair, who is able, my God, to do something. As a matter of fact, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. So whatever this thing is, whatever the stronghold is that has you bound, whatever that thing is, my God, that's got you bitter, whatever that thing is that's got you tied up, I know a Savior who is able to loose you, my God, of that situation. But all you got to do, my God, glory to God, is be open to the move of God that's coming from the woman of the man of God's mouth. Glory to God in here. We people of God have got to be, my God, better. Glory to God at helping one another that all of us, my God, might receive the blessings and might receive the promises of God because I believe the word of God in what it says. He says that when two of us, my God, on earth agree about anything, I didn't make it up. It's found here in Matthew chapter 18. Verse number 19, whatever we ask for, the word of the Lord says it will be done for them by my father in heaven. Is there something that you've asked for that God hasn't done in your life? Maybe it's because we've been bad babysitters. Maybe it's because we've acted like we didn't care about what the people were doing. You said, listen, it's not me. You said, I've got mine. Oh yeah, we, you see, I'm good over here, Pastor Tina. But I want to say this morning, you are your brother's keeper. Is it risky to go to somebody and, and, and tell them about their faults? Sure, it's risky. But look at the reward that you get at the end of that verse. I believe everything that the Lord says. Look at the reward that you get. Oh, we see it all day. We see, you, sometimes we're afraid to confront the enemy. But we recognize that the Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I know your daughter is practicing lesbianism. I know your son's on drugs. Listen, I know, my God, they're gang banging. Come on in here, somebody. You're not wrestling against them. It's you, you talking to the spirit that's controlling them. And don't you know you're more powerful than that? You're more powerful than the spirit that's trying to convince them that they're not, that they're not the, the God chosen person that God said that they were. You're more powerful than the spirit that's trying to bring them down. You're more powerful than the spirit that's trying to kill them. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Oh yeah, we wrestle against principalities and powers and wickedness and high places. But just because you're reckless against those kinds of authorities does not mean that you don't have the power to bring them down. We bring them down, my God, with the power of God. We bring them down by the authority of God. Are you your brother's keeper? Yeah, you are. C come on in here, somebody. You have taken your eyes off of somebody that you were supposed to be watching. I don't know who it is, but you do. You, you've taken your eyes off of them. Ah, go find some time to talk to that person by yourself. You know, no, the, yeah, sometimes we want to bring everybody into it right away. But that's not what the word of the Lord says. 
He says, first you go to them by yourself. And if they receive you, then yeah, you won them. But if not, just follow the strategy that the Lord has set before you. Yeah. And then thank God when your brother, when your sister is restored. Because then my God, then the door is open for God to do some mighty and powerful things in your life. Oh, don't you want God to do it? Oh my God. Isn't it wonderful? When there is no confusion in your life, isn't it wonderful, my God? Because the word of the Lord says, listen, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. My God, listen, what would happen if the church, the people of God, will begin to start binding confusion? What if the people of God will be start, will start binding, my God, the works of the devil? Listen, work, how you yell to Gail? Begin to start binding the works of the darkness. What if the people of God would start just kicking out the things, my God, that the enemy is trying to do in our lives? What would happen if we would start decreeing and declaring a thing, my God? Because the Bible says, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And my God, whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. What if the people of God would start beginning to lose unity and, and lose peace, my God, and, and lose joy here, my God, and lose, my God, forgiveness and, and lose all those loose love, my God, here in the earth realm. My God, what in the world would happen if if we would start doing that, my God, as people, men and women of Christ, glory to God, something would happen. Something would happen between us. My God, something would happen between brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. Because we cannot be ashamed. We cannot be ashamed. Are you your brother's keeper? This morning, I want to say to you, yes, you are. You are your brother's keeper. And this, my God, is the word for those that love God. Because you know what Jesus said? He said, we are his brothers. Glory to God. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means he's my brother. So what does that say? He was saying, my God, he said, I'm, he said, you're my brother. He said, I'm your brother. And therefore he was keeping me. Glory to God. And what if he had said to God, I'm not, I don't know where they are. I don't know what they're doing. I don't care. He said, listen, listen God, why are you making me, why are you making me responsible? For, uh, glory to God. What if Jesus has said, Lord, why are you making me responsible for them? Why are you making me responsible for their sins? Why are you making me responsible for their faults? But he didn't. He says, if you need somebody to go, he says, I'll die for them. He says, I'll give up my life for them. Oh, yeah, I'll be spit on for them. Yeah, I am. Jesus said himself, he says, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. He says, I'll go for them. I'll go to the cross for them. I'll die for them. I'll do it. Glory to God. He says, I will do it for them. That was the love that he had for us. It kept him on the cross until they crucified him. But that wasn't the end of the story, y'all. <laughs> Glory to God. That wasn't the end of the story. Because he got up for your sins. He got up for my sins. The Bible says he got up. Jesus raised him from the, God raised him from the dead with all power in his hand. He told the Lord, my God. Oh, I know where they are. He said, I am. My brother's keeper, this morning I want to say to you all, recommit yourself to those that you have been watching. Recommit yourself to be a better babysitter. Recommit yourself to be your brother and your sister's keeper. Father God, I just bless your name. I praise you, God, for who you are, God. I praise you, Lord God, for you are more than wonderful, God. I praise you, Lord God, for giving us this word so that we can recommit ourselves, God, to one another. Recommit ourselves to honoring God. Recommit ourselves to loving one another. Recommit ourselves, oh God, for caring for one another, Lord. Recommit ourselves to doing, God, what it is that we need to do. But men and women, boys and girls might come back to you, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that not only are, is your hand on us, but God, our hands are on others. That we will come together, God, be unified, God, that the Bible says that, God, whatever it is that we ask for, God, you will do it. In the name of the Father, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing today, God, in the lives of your people, Lord. And we thank you that you're going to continue to heal them 
Deliver them, Lord God, and set them free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Glory to God. Yes, it is Giving Friday. It's Giving Friday. Listen, giving to this ministry. I thank all of you for, for your consistent giving. I thank you all, yes, for your commitment to give. I thank you all just even for sharing this word. That somebody might hear a word that will do something special in their lives. I thank you for what you do. This is good ground. You can give through Giblify and there's a link somewhere. <laughs> you have it somewhere. If not, I'll put one up. But I just love you all so much with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful weekend. And listen, I am imploring all of you to go to your church on Sunday. If you don't have a church home and you're in the city of South Bend, Indiana, I ask you to come to 707 Sherman Avenue where the power of God is there. The love of God is there. Come and get a word from the Lord. It will bless you. It will heal you. Have a wonderful weekend. You go in peace.